Test one two. Test 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 test. Mm, don't know if that matters. <clears throat> That's not gonna make the edit, right? No, oh, wait. You edit them, don't you? Hey everyone, welcome back to the Biblicist Podcast. I'm so glad that you're tuning in with us today. If you're listening on podbean.com or on Apple Podcasts, um, I'd like you to know that as of last week, we're also on YouTube uh, called the same exact thing, the Biblicist Podcast. And so if you're interested in watching these, instead of just listening to the audio, you can go to YouTube and, and, and search the Biblicist Podcast. Um, you can get subscribed to that as well and watch that. Um, or if you're watching on YouTube and you'd much rather just have the audio, um, you can also do that uh, by going to Apple Podcasts or podbean.com and searching for the Biblicist Podcast. Um, and so either way. So if you're on YouTube, uh, this is like the second video that's on there. Um, and there is a previous 21, 22 or so episodes that are on the podcast um, that are not going to be on YouTube from season one, season two. You know, like the first episode of this season. So um, you can go and check that out as well. So. Um, I just want you to know there is more out there if you're just watching on YouTube. And for those that are listening, that there's also a YouTube channel now. Some of you are like, oh, yeah, I'll check out the YouTube channel. Then you'll see my face and go, oh, yeah, no. I might even lose listeners. They're like, man, look at this guy's ugly face. I don't want to be on, on this YouTube channel. Um, I'm halfway kidding. Um, so today's episode is interesting. Like I, it, it, When I do episodes, sometimes... It can be different. I some some are really planned out where I really stick to my notes heavily because I want to make sure that I don't say anything like totally off the wall. And other times I'm just really sharing my heart on something, um, and I, I want to still I want it to still be biblical, but I'm also kind of sharing my personal perspective or, or how I'm processing something currently. Um, and that's kind of how this episode is going to be. Like I have some notes and I have some scripture we're going to go through, but I'm not really sure what the final product. <laughs> Uh, of this episode is going to be because my my thoughts are kind of all over the place on this specific thing in regards to uh, to me personally in our lives in, in the church in society um, there's just there's a lot that we could cover and I'm not sure where we're all going to go today but um, it has to do with our view on our possessions and the things that we have there are a lot of possessions that I have and I and I'm thankful to have. Um, some things are just nice to have. Some things are, are helpful to have. Uh, for instance, it's nice to have the equipment that makes it possible to produce this podcast. Uh, I don't have to produce a podcast or a YouTube channel, uh, but I'm thankful for the opportunity to do that. Um, and it's nice that I was able to uh, make a cup of coffee before going into uh, this uh, this episode. Yeah, and I'll probably have to blur this out if it has like a brand name or something on here. Oops. In the case of, of, of the church, um, you know, there's possessions that we can be thankful for. Um, I'm thankful for that as a church and the local church that I'm a part of that we have a building that we can use. And that's that's helpful. And I'm thankful for a sound system at our church building. And it makes it's very beneficial and the ability to to live stream, especially right now. I'm thankful that we have the cameras and equipment available uh, to be able, the technology available to live stream our services. I'm thankful for all of this. But through these, these two months of, of quarantine, it's reminded me of some things. Um, the church is still the church without a building and all the possessions that go along with that. Um, it's helpful. Absolutely. But, but the church was established without a church building and without all the equipment and tools that we use today. Um, and if you look back in acts and you see the early church, what you see is having God and living on mission was sufficient and it still is. Now back to me personally and, and to our lives as individuals. Some of us have been reminded about how fragile life is. Uh, now I'm thankful that it, it appears that the coronavirus isn't hasn't been as deadly as originally thought of at first. It's still dangerous. It's still a problem. But it, it but thankfully the death toll has been much lower than than expected, and I'm thankful for that. But some of us have been reminded, man. This life is all we get. I, can, I can't control this. 
I can't control what happens tomorrow. And all of a sudden our possessions, the things that we have, objects that we have, suddenly seem less important than they used to seem. Knowing that there's people around you that you could lose tomorrow because of circumstances that you can't control or your own life. One of my pastors used to say this quote, and I'll never forget it. And I don't know if it's original to him. He may have gotten it from someone else. I don't remember. But he, he used to say this all the time. It's okay to have possessions as long as they don't possess you. It's okay to have possessions as long as they don't possess you. And it's interesting because throughout the Bible, we see warnings of idol worship and the problem that it always causes. And and we we may even tend to skip over those parts of the Bible like, oh yeah, that doesn't really apply to me. Um, that's ridiculous, idol worship. <laughs> well, first of all, just so we're aware, like I think we all know this, but there's still people around the world that, that worship idols, graven images. Um, but I'd argue that even in our Western culture Christian homes, that idol worship is or can be prevalent. And then what does that mean? What does that look like? I'm not saying that you have like, you know, some idol graven images in your closet that you're bowing down to. Um, but are our possessions possessing us? Are, are they possessions or are they obsessions? I've heard people make the comment, you don't want to be so heavenly focused and heaven, so your mind so set on heaven that you have no earthly good. And that's not from the Bible, though. <laughs> you see the opposite. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21, it says this, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The things that we can invest in now, like possessions that we have. One day I won't be able to use them anymore because I'll be dead and eventually even the objects themselves will be gone. But eternal things that we invest in last for eternity. I think back to, I was able to, um, last year I was able to take a missions trip, my very first missions trip to Asia and the specific place that we went to, the things that I noticed were the immense poverty, um, trash on all the corners and on the streets, a really bad sewage system, the smells, a lot of things that all of us in Western culture would find really unacceptable. And all of a sudden, needs versus wants looked a lot different to me. You know, I, I was frustrated this week because of some car issues and knowing how much it was going to cost to fix the car and having some different issues with it. And I'm still working through some of those things with my vehicle, but I. But I've been around people who literally have nothing except for Jesus. And they find him completely sufficient. Because they're living for heavenly things and not earthly things. Now, now I, I'm a church planter. I was able to be part of planting a church uh, where I'm at. And it's been on my heart for a long time to be a church planter and to help church planters. And this is still an ongoing journey. 
with me, but we can get so caught up if we're not careful into things that aren't that important. Like the objects that we want to use at a church plant. <laughs> they can be helpful tools and helpful things. And, and I think there's great tools. And if we have the ability to use tools and objects um, to God's glory, that we should do that. Don't misunderstand me. But we we got to be careful in our priorities with that. We've got to be so careful with our priorities of that. Are these this helpful to us or are we obsessed about this? Oh, we have to have this kind of podium. When in reality, do you even need an EED, a podium? No, no. People could really, really need some clean drinking water. So like, let's be careful about how we talk about needs. We need to have this type of whatever. We need to have the best of whatever. And I, like I said, I like having some nice things and I like being able to, to, to use things for God's glory. But let's be careful how we view our possessions, whether it's within a, a, a church plant, a church ministry, or whether it's us and families as individuals. It's, it's nice to be able to have a TV and have a nice quality and be able to play things on, a, on, on your TV. But you don't need one. If, if, if one of your kids or spouse or whoever or yourself broke your television set, is that the end of the world? I just said television set. Does anyone say television set? Like, they're not really like sets anymore. The things that we stress out about, are they needs or are they just helpful things that we've put too much stock in? Let's take a look at uh, Matthew Chapter 19, starting in verse 16, going through verse 24. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments, he saith unto him. Which, Jesus said, thou shalt do not. Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I get? By the way, that's not possible. Him saying that I've perfectly kept these since I was a, a young person, since I was born, like, not possible, just so you know. So his claim is fallacious, but that's whatever. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, which he's not, he's claiming to be, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus isn't saying that those who are wealthy or have a bunch of possessions can't go to heaven. He's not saying that. He's saying it's difficult for them to get over their possessions. It's difficult for them to let go of their possessions and to know that Jesus is all that they truly need. But I think that has snuck into our homes in our Western culture homes. How many of us are willing to lose our possessions for the cause of Christ? How many of us are willing to literally everything in our home, just lose all of it, give all of it away, sell all of it to serve him? I'm not saying that God is telling you to do that, but are you willing to do it? Are you? Am I? Or is there that one thing that, no, but I, but I have to have this. This is special. And I understand there's like special objects that we have. Like I understand that. But are you willing to even give up that special thing that you have that's maybe even passed down or whatever for the cause of Christ though? I realize this is some pretty heavy stuff. But this is what I see in scripture. Are we obsessed with our possessions or are we willing to give it all away for Jesus? Are we willing to understand the difference between wants and needs, between helpful and necessary? As as to, to, to fellow church planters and pastors, are we real, are we 
do we understand the helpful possessions that we can have within within the church body? Do we differentiate that from, oh, we have to have this in order to be a successful church? Be careful. And I'm talking to myself here. Be careful that it, you think you cannot be a successful church plant or whatever if I don't have these specific possessions. What kind of God do we serve? What kind of God do we serve? A God who is dependent on us purchasing the correct items for our church buildings and making sure we have the correct type of setup in our auditoriums and making sure da 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 da. Or I can only train up my children the way they should go if I have this specific type of program that someone put together for me. What God do we serve? What Holy Spirit do we possess? I'm afraid we've fallen into idol worship. It's a warning I bring to you. It's a warning I bring to myself. I hope the Biblicist podcast is a blessing and a help and a tool, but it is not necessary. Let's look at one more passage. Luke chapter 12, verses 16 through 21. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he brought within himself, saying, Sorry, he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will put down, I pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to myself, Soul, thou hast such uh, hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich toward God. How foolish. How foolish to lay up treasures for ourselves and not to lay up treasures in heaven. My life could end today. And what have I invested in greater? God's kingdom or my own? I'm still processing this. I'm still on a journey on this. I'm still needing to humble myself and to see what God would have me to do. I want to get back into scripture. I need to read his word so much more. I need to submit so much more to the Holy Spirit in humility. We need to read the Bible and live the Bible. Even the parts that are hard. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful Monday. And I know there's a lot of places still locked down and different things going on. But there's light at the end of the tunnel. Hang in there. Hang on to Jesus. Have a great day. 